should call my channel Cody B Amateur Pyrotechnics at this point. All right, so we've got these mini one inch artillery shells and we're gonna be taking a look at them today and going out and demoing them. Uh, we're gonna fuse up a nice little rack of these guys and shoot them off, but I wanna show you how small these shells are. And that's kind of the point of this video because it's just crazy how tiny these things actually are. You know, so no bigger than an inch in diameter. And I'm curious if they list the effects. You know, when you're talking shells this small, I would assume it'd be kind of hard to really plan those effects out. And it looks like these may even be rewraps because they're the same uh, packaging here. No, so it doesn't look like they're labeled for effect and I didn't see anything on the back. Um, oh, here we go. Okay, let's see if we can find it on this one. All right, so these are obviously going to be wrong, but the big fireworks mini magnum here does list the effects, um, but they're not actually on the shelves, so you're kind of guessing. And so if you guys were interested, that's what kind of effects you're going to get in the big fireworks mini magnums. And then these are a mystery, the Boomer brand. And I think that the Boomer brand was actually cheaper than the big fireworks. Um, I guess you're paying for the name a little bit on these. Maybe they're made a little better too, who knows. So let's take out these tubes, take a look at them. Now, they're both the same size. I'm pretty positive that these really do come out of the same factory just based on the similarities. Now over here, I've actually got a boombox tube, which is just a tad longer. Um, but with these tubes, we're gonna make a little three shot rack, kind of something like this. Um, and so we'll show you how we do that. For the sake of this video, since we don't have a lot of time, we're going to do this really bootleg method to make a rack. Um, of course, if I had more time, I would be screwing these down onto boards. I would not be doing this. But I really recommend against doing it this way. Again, this is just because we don't have a lot of time. Um, but you're going to need a scissors, some cardboard, three tubes or more. It's up to you. Uh, probably two rolls of tape. The only reason I grabbed two is because this one's almost out. I haven't decided if I'm going to build this rack and do commentary about it while I'm building it or just fast forward the whole thing. Um, so we're going to shoot for record time here in building a rack and see if I can get this whole thing in one shot. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut a piece of cardboard. Just about this long. Um, probably won't need to be this thick. And what I'll do then is just lay these down like this. And that looks about the correct size. So then uh, we really want the strongest bond to be from this side to the tube. So what I'll do is take a long enough piece of the duct tape here. Oops. And just connect that. And this is... Uh, just to secure the tubes to the base. We're not actually relying on this to hold the tubes in place. More or less, it's just to keep them lined up. And so that's about what we'll be doing there. Now, like I said, I'm gonna try to get this all in one take. And if I can do that in under five minutes and successfully build this rack, then you guys will get the commentary. But otherwise, I am gonna fast forward this um, if it takes me too long or I run into problems. Like right now, I almost lost the duct tape. So then we will actually, um, we don't want to do that quite yet. I'm going to shove some of these in here. Get little spacers in there. It's not much. This is honestly more of a hazard than it is safe. Um, so like I said, if you want to be professional about it, build a rack, screws and wood. Don't ever do this. Okay, now I'll take this duct tape here and try to really push down on these tubes, get them nice and uh, straight with each other. We want a little bit of an angle on them too. It's just gonna look cooler. Wrap that around. Okay, so now the tubes are held in place and this is the point where we're gonna take some more cardboard. And we want about this much. And we're gonna need it to be that thick as much as we need it to be longer. Um, again, more duct tape. 
almost out of duct tape here, so we'll have to resort to the packing tape here in a sec. I'm just really interested to see if I can do this in under five minutes and make it look half decent. Now we really want to push that cardboard down as hard as we can to really kind of secure it like that. And then what we'll do is take this little loose piece that we've got here, we're going to shove some more in. And this time putting it the opposite way. So before I was putting them in straight, like you see here, now we're going to do it the opposite way. And we'll just see if we can just bend that down in there. Yep, that'll work. All right. Now what we've got to do, we're running out of duct tape, um, but we want to do something like that. So let's get a piece of this in here, secure it down like this. I'm going to be really impressed if I can get this done in under five minutes. No cutting, no editing, but we'll see. All right, so now we've got the rack pretty much done. The only thing we're going to do now is just continuously wrap this whole thing um, as tight as we possibly can. And for this, I'm going to use the packing tape because it's much easier to use when you're wrapping. We really want to go as tight as we can with this stuff. call my channel Cody B Amateur Pyrotechnics at this point. Well, there you go. There's your rack. And of course, we're going to put bricks on either side of this thing. Um, because even with it like that, you know, this thing is still rocking. So we've got to secure it. We'll put bricks on either side when we do the demo. But right now, I'm going to fuse up these little one inch shells and then we'll go out and shoot them off. It's time to fuse up this rack. And then after I'm done fusing this thing, we're going to show you a little method to make this easier on you in the future. Um, so the first thing you want to do is obviously get that last shot done before you do anything else. And I've explained why in other videos. Um, so we'll just get that connected. And I'm going to need an, well, maybe I can just slide that down. Because we like it to be as close to the tip of the fuse as possible. Alright, and then we're going to do the the first one here, and you see how that comes together very nicely. And we'll just uh, connect that like this. You almost don't need two points of ignition for the mini canister, or the mini artillery shells, um, because when you're working with any type of artillery shell, the fuse is a lot more aggressive. So pretty much any spark hits that and it's going. But I just always feel much more comfortable doing two sets of zip ties to give it that two points of ensured ignition. All right, now we're just gonna snip these. And then what I'm gonna show you is a way you can prepare to reload your racks very fast. And that method is called chaining. And some people call it the bang chain or bang chaining, <laughs> kind of a tongue twister. Um, a bang chain is when you string a bunch of firecrackers onto one fuse, um, but chaining methods and other pyrotechnics are like this, which we'll show you how to do that with shells here in just a moment. So for the chaining method, we know that we need about this much fuse to fuse the whole rack. And you can see I've gone down to the very end here on the quick fuse, and that is actually what we are going to use as a little basis. Um, for measurement purposes and whatnot. And all we're gonna do is make some easy reload packs of these things. And so we've gone down about that far. So we're gonna do the same thing outside of the rack. This makes it so much easier to just throw these chains into the rack so you don't have to load them all again and then worry about refusing. Um, just makes things faster especially when you gotta light it and get out. So we've done that, and now we'll come down. Sometimes you gotta use the tape measure or something, um, 
because we've got about two inches of fuse to work with so we know that because of the depth of the tube and how much quick fuse we used on top so from this point to that point we've got two inches so we want to go about two inches down for the one zip tie I hope you guys are following this for this zip tie you got to be two inches away from that one so that's exactly what we'll do and uh, I might be chopping and editing here in a moment oh and you always want to pull these out that's just gonna help give you a little more fuse length on the top it doesn't make a huge difference but it does help when you're fusing up racks and stuff so the second point of ignition has got to be right there about two inches away I would call that see that's exactly what we got going on there sorry I'm out of a frame there get that loaded up so now when I'm out at the shoot site I don't have to worry about reloading these things and refusing them in the freezing cold I can just pop this in there and we're good to go and you see this a lot in 1-3 fireworks they actually sell a lot of 1-3 shells pre-chained for racks um, I know a couple of guys I talked to order them that way, so we want to be about another two inches. So when you get into consumer, you got to obviously do this. There's no way to buy them pre-chained. Um, I wish a firework company would do that, but I don't think it's, it's coming anytime soon until racks become more universal, that is. All right, we'll go about right there. Give or take an inch or two, it's probably not going to matter all that much. And there you go. You've got a chain that you can just reload in there. And you're all fused up and good to go. You just hit the fuse, enjoy the fireworks, and get the hell out. Alright, we got it secured with bricks, and this is going right off the back of my tailgate. You know, I'll be honest with you guys, for $3, that was super impressive. And I'm definitely gonna be picking up more of these. Here goes round two, mini artillery shells. So far, super awesome. Man, those things pack a punch for their size. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed.